It's Tuesday, September 1st here at the West End Gun Club. I'm out here at the Rimfire Range. I'm gonna run through the September NRL 22 course of fire. It was published last week, so um, you can all download that and take a look at the stages. Uh, I took today off from work. I am kind of lagging. Um, it's uh, almost eight o'clock and I usually get here earlier than that, but I figure I'm in no real hurry to get out of the range. Although uh, it might be a little warm today. It's a little cooler than it was last week, but I um, kind of want to get out of here before it gets hot. And I do kind of want to make a work call at 1300 hours, so I should be out of here well before that and I can make that call. Um, I was running through my, um, I was looking through my gear before I pulled out my tripod and I just realized I forgot to bring a rear bag. Um, so apparently I'm gonna shoot this course of fire or just do the run through right now without a rear bag unless I magically find something. But I think I, for I forgot on a shelf because I usually pack up my vehicle the night before I leave for the range but I just didn't do that. And so this morning I was just throwing stuff in the back of the Jeep and just forgot to throw a rear bag in there. But I was more concerned about the, t the targets, the target stands because I made a couple more to store in the Connex container and some of the props that we need. And I just totally forgot the bag. Anyway, let me just go ahead and get unloaded. I'm gonna go down in the Connex container and just start throwing some stuff out here on the firing line and we'll get set up. It's Tuesday morning, but it's pretty busy here at the range. Main lines, um, quite a few guys out there, and there's a bunch of guys in the private bay shooting. Um, some old guy gave me lip. Um, he's uh, following me in. When we turned off the main road onto the uh, Myers Canyon Road to get to the range, he was following me in. And then, you know, lock gate. I'm, the, I'm unlocking the gate, and I go in there, ask him, "Hey, man, um, can I see your, can I see your car, please?" And he's all, uh, and he gives me the code. He says verbally the code for the gate. And I'm like, I still need to see your car. He said, well, if I know the code, I'm a member. I'm like, nah, not really. Um, club rules indicate that you're supposed to, you're supposed to show your card anyway. And he's, he was giving me some attitude and, and it, he's angry that I asked him for his card and I made him pull it out of his pocket. Um, I don't know what his problem is. It's not that difficult to pull your membership card out of your pocket, your wallet. You're supposed to have it ready anyway, because by definition, or according to the rules, you're supposed to have your membership card readily available. So if someone asks you to show your card, you show it to them at the range. So whatever, right? I don't have time for his his problems or whatever. So anyway, set up all the stages. Um, there is a rooftop stage this month, which we will not be shooting because number one, I don't have a rooftop yet built. Um, there is a couple up there, but two, I don't have my truck uh, right now. Um, I'm actually getting it painted. So uh, finally got around to getting off my ass and getting some quotes to have at least the hood and the roof done. So I'm gonna pretty much, if I don't know if, I don't think I've showed it on video, but my Toyota Tacoma, I have a 2010 standard cab or regular cab. And for some reason the paint peeled viciously on the hood and the roof. So I'm having them do the hood and the roof and basically and the doors too. Um, so pretty much almost the whole front of the cab, um, not the grill or anything. Um, just to, I mean, just to get it so it looks half deep, halfway decent. I don't know what happened to the factory paint. It, my dad's 2007 uh, Frontier, he sold that Frontier or he traded in when he got his other, his new uh, car. Um, but that was a 2007, it's three years older than my 2010 Tacoma and his, sits out, his was sitting on the sun too, compared to mine, my truck, and his did not peel like that. Granted, he, he waxed his a little bit more than I did, so I don't know if that made a difference, but that Toyota, Toyota paint did not hold up very well. So 2010, I've only got 60,000 or so miles on it, and I'm never gonna get, I'm not getting, I don't plan on getting rid of that truck because it's a, it's a good truck. And it's, it's good for hauling stuff, no frills. Um, you know, it's got the 2.7 four liter, it's a reliable truck. It's so low maintenance. You don't have to do anything with it. And you know, it runs like a top. So figure just get a painted since I'm um, not getting rid of it. And the funny thing is I get offers on that truck. Um, not as much as my prelude when I drive that around, but I get offers to that truck. Uh, if people asking if I want to sell it, they'll leave notes on my truck. You know, I figure it's probably gardeners, you know, landscapers who want to buy it because it's, it's, uh, you know, it's got the four cylinder, it's low maintenance and it's good for hauling, you know, you know, gardening tools and landscaping stuff. So um, that's why I figure why it's probably popular. And they don't they don't make the standard or regular Cap Tacomas anymore. So it's nice to have that vehicle. 
All right, let me load up the rest of my mags, and then uh, I need to warm. I need to dirty my barrel because it is clean. I cleaned it after the last match, so I'm gonna run some. I think I'm gonna run some old center X to it just to foul it up, and then run some long range SK long range, which I'll shoot today, and then uh, we'll get started. I laid out the stages for this month's course of fire pretty spread out. Um, the primary reason is because at least a couple of stages have a lot of props, and so you need a little bit more of uh, area around it so you can maneuver. Um, and two. One of the stages uh, is at a distance, the target's at a distance where I can't accommodate it in a straight line, the way this range is laid out with all the uh, impact berms. So we're shooting at a slight angle. It's not huge, but it's, I had to put it on the far left side of the firing line. And that's what we're starting off with right now. So the first stage is called Uncle Jesse, or the first stage that I'm going to go through is called Uncle Jesse. Uh, you got kind of two sets of targets at 54 yards. You have a 1.5 inch on a single hanger, then a KYL rack, um, all four uh, standard NRL 22 sizes, the quarter inch, half inch, three quarter inch, and one inch, um, all set at 54 yards. <clears throat> you have a 120 second part time, around counts 10. You're gonna start standing rifle and all gear in hand, mag in action open. Upon start signal, shooter will take a prone and take prone supported position, engage the targets from large to small. Once the quarter inch target is hit, the shooter must bank their points by jumping up and yelling Uncle Jesse and start over. If the shooter misses, they lose the, any unbanked points and must start over on the one and a half inch target. At any time, the shooter can choose the bank points but must start over. Once points are banked, they can't be lost. So it's basically uh, basically uh, starting large to small. It's know your limits. So if you don't think you can make that next shot, just say, you know, stand up and yell Uncle Jesse or whatever to reset and then start it again on, one point, on the 1.5 inch target. Uh, the key thing is that the, uh, the point values for the targets is uh, increasing. So the 1.5 inch target is two points, the one inch is three points, the three quarter inch is 10 points, the half inch is 15 points, and the quarter inch is 20 points. So basically in order to get all the points, you need to shoot a clean obviously uh, but if you can't shoot that quarter inch target at 50 yards uh, and you decide to opt out of that you're dropping 40 points total because that quarter inch is worth 20 points and you have to shoot it twice uh, so it's it's dropping 40 points or losing the whole the whole thing right of that 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 uh that string so you probably have to game it if you don't feel comfortable. To be honest, I'm just going to go ahead and do it. Uh, even though I don't, I don't have a rear bag, I looked, I don't have a rear bag. Uh, and I was just kind of warming up earlier, uh, getting the barrel warm. And that quarter inch target is actually kind of hard to hit without a bag because I'm kind of a little bit movement. And I think my zero is a little bit off for this SK long range match. Um, I was trying to check it out. I, I think at the bottom, I might be needing like a tenth of tenth of a mil either way but it's going to be hard to call Uncle Jesse, that one was, <clears throat> I was able to clean that first string, but I'm kind of hesitant to shoot the rest of it, or at least the last one, without a bag, but we'll go for broke, right? It's just a run through. And I missed, so I lost those points. Anyway, I shot the last target just for fun. I missed that, uh, the half inch. Should have been easy, but I'm sh shaking a little bit with my, my hand holding it, holding the rear uh, buttstock. But I dropped, uh, so I lost all the points in the second string. So I banked the 50 points. So I only got 50 on this one. Uh, I've seen people miss the KYL rack. Um, even at 25 yards, like the quarter inch. 
So if you if your gun is if you don't know your gun very well, you at 50 yards you may not want to shoot the quarter inch. You may just want to bank it once you get to the half inch. And once you shoot the half inch, just bank it. Um, it's better to lose that 20 or 40 points than dropping all, you know, dropping 50. So I mean, 50. So so each string is worth. Uh, you get two passes, so it's better to drop, you know, 20 points on each pass as opposed to losing all, all your points. I don't know. Take your pick, but just definitely practice with your gun. A quarter inch is a small target at 50 yards, so. Uh, I mean, and you just have to clip the target, so a little bit each way, you have a little, you know, getting a 22 cal projectile to hit that quarter inch target in some manner. I know it's tempting, so. I don't know. Anyway, I'll just say, I'll write down 50 points for this stage for me today, and we'll move on. The next stage of fire we're gonna run through is called working on Labor Day. Uh, you'll see there's a bunch of props behind me, and those are priv pivotal for this stage. Uh, we have basically two targets on the same bank. Uh, it's a two inch and a two and a half inch on a double hanger, 87 yards. 120 second part time, 10 rounds. Uh, Basically, you start standing, rifle grounded, mag in, action open. On signal, shooter will set up any three barricades, uh, picking from a two gallon bucket, the five gallon bucket, the tire, or the sawhorse. So there's four barricades you can pick, you'll use three. And take any position on the first barricade and engage to each target with two shots each. Uh, it doesn't say large to small, so I guess I would go large to small. <clears throat> shooter will then move, their, move to their second barricade and engage each target with two shots each. Shooter will then transition to the last barricade and engage each target with one shot each. Props must be set so each barricade is used independently. Props will be staged 10 feet from the firing position in any direction that is conducted to the range layout. Um, I don't want to get a tape measure. I guess I could get a tape measure. I'll verify later, but that's 10. This should be around 10 feet. So basically, you're gonna, the rifle's going to start grounded. Mag in. You're going to, on signal, you just run, grab any three barricades, set them up and then shoot off of them. Uh, seems pretty simple enough. It's just a question of deciding which one you want. Uh, to be honest, I would say that the most stable would be the buckets and the tire, in my opinion. Um, the sawhorse is more comfortable to shoot. I will grant you that. Um, but I think the buckets might be easiest, uh, depending on how you like to shoot. I'm honestly just thinking out loud right now. I might actually just prep a little bit, practice before I shoot the stage. I'm just curious how I'm going to shoot this. So that was pretty relatively simple, but I kind of gamed it. 
I do have a spigot mount that I always keep on here. Uh, so I was able to use that uh, and wedge it against my bipod. It's kind of a barricade stop. Didn't run a bag because didn't have one, but I, I would definitely run a bag to stabilize the rear end. Um, but yeah, this one's pretty straightforward. Uh, for those of you who are running op a base class, I would probably use the bipod on top of the buckets if you're going to shoot the buckets. In the tire stage, or the tire, it's easy if you just, you know, just use your, kind of just pull back on the gun and you use the bipod as sort of a, sort of a barricade stop, a reverse barricade stop. And you should be able to shoot off the tire pretty, pretty uh, easily uh, with a lot of stability. Anyway, that was pretty straightforward. Uh, that one was not a tiebreaker, so kind of just take your time, I guess. You should have plenty of time to shoot this stage uh, and come away with a uh, pretty good opportunity to uh, make some good shots or take some good shots, rather. Uh, anyway, let's move on. The third stage in the course of fire that we're going to run through today is called Evil Eye. We got three targets, three banks. We got a one inch at 50, one and a half inch at 75, and a two inch at 100. Uh, 120 second part time, 10 rounds. You're going to start standing rifle and all gear in hand, mag in, action open. Upon start signal, shooter will take a prone supportive position and engage targets with one shot each near to far hit or miss. Strong side, shooter will then transition to support side and repeat near to far with one shot each. Shooter will then transition back to strong side and repeat near to far with one shot each, but will engage the 100 yard target with two shots. So one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, four. Pretty straightforward, so strong uh, standard side, support side, standard side. It's going to be difficult for me to shoot this today because I have no rear bag and I have not, sh I'm, it's hard enough to shoot without a rear bag. It's even harder to shoot support side without a rear bag, but we'll make it work. So I think I missed that ninth shot. Plenty of time. Should have slowed down. 90 points. Uh, that one's pretty straightforward. Uh, I don't know. Not else to say. I mean, I, a lot of people struggle with support side shooting. Um, so do I sometimes. But it's just practice, right? Um, I'll have to look at that on video. I think I missed the ninth shot. But let's, like, let's write down 90 points for this stage. So I dropped 50, nothing, then uh, 10. So I'm down 60. Uh, stage is pretty straightforward. Just shoot, transition, shoot, transition, shoot, transition, swap sides, shoot, transition, shoot, transition. Um, I probably would have been a little bit more comfortable had I had a rear bag, but I was able to make it work. Um, I had it down on 13 power, roughly 13, 14 power. Key thing is not to get too high in the magnification so you get tunnel visioned, and uh, it's easy to line up your shots. All right, let's move on to the next stage of fire. The fourth stage of fire that we're going to run through is called Fast As You Can Make the Steel Ring. 
It's a sling stage, so this is probably the one stage everyone hates. Uh, 120 second part time, 10 rounds. We have two targets, same distance. It's a four inch on a double hanger and a five inch on a single hanger at 73 yards, both of them right next to each other. Um, I put them small to left to right uh, because that's what it looks like according to the graphic in the course of fire. You're gonna start standing rifle in all gear in hand, mag in action open. Upon start single shoot will engage the targets in the following manner. Uh, standing two shots on five inch target, kneeling three shots on five inch target, seated two shots on four inch, prone unsupported three shots on four inch target. So standing, kneeling, five inch, seated prone, four inch. So two, three, two, three. Um, from the most unstable to the most stable position, theoretically. Seems pretty straightforward. Go run through it. I'm gonna take the mic off. Um, last stage of fire, I forgot to put the mic back on. I was talking, hopefully it comes out good on video. First shot, which wasn't good. Well, oh, minus three, but I made a decent pull on it on that shot. elevation here. Barely clipped it. What's it? Sorry. Two, three, two, three. Did I get that off? I don't think I did. <clears throat> yep, 120.03, so three hundredths of a second is too slow. So I dropped four points, four shots, I think. Minus three, minus four, so. So 60, only 60 points. Live, drops two standing, one standing, two kneeling. And then one prone. Okay, um, don't know what to say, it's just merely practice. So, so far I've dropped 50 plus 10 is 60 plus 40 is 90. I dropped 90 points so far going into stage five. So, not very good, but um, I'm, gonna I'm gonna shoot a couple more. I'm gonna shoot this stage one more time just for fun. Um, not on video, but I'm just gonna, yeah, well, I'll leave the cameras on. Let me go load a mag. one I 
I just realized I shot the stage wrong. I shot the small target kneeling. Whatever. So, I mean, I technically dropped two points, but or three points kneeling. Uh, but in the spirit of the of just practice, I technically dropped only one shot. Uh, it's just all practice. Uh, a lot of people don't like these unsupported positions. Definitely say that you need to uh, just take time to shoot these whenever you can. And my trash bag that I put my mat in is sliding away. I'll get it. Anyway, one more stage we'll go through. It's the rooftop stage, which I don't have a rooftop, but I set up the barrel, which is the second prop in that stage. And I set up a target because I need to just uh, paint the target placements uh, beforehand. They usually hold up after three weeks, uh, the paint on the ground. They did grade the road, actually. Uh, they grade the, the uh, impact area, so it's all leveled out and so all the old paint is gone and they actually killed some of my whisker markers that I had out there so I need to re put new whisker markers out there for the distances. Um, so hopefully they're not going to grade it again uh, between now and the fourth Sunday of the month. So I'm going to spray paint the uh, target placements uh, so that come match morning all I do is just go out there and plop the targets down on those exact spots that I painted. Um, but I'll use a lot of paint this time just so it holds up. The dirt is loose too so it may not hold up well. I may just put some rocks there in place uh, into the ground and spray paint those rocks so it'll last a little bit longer. Anyway, let's move on to that fifth stage. So the fifth stage of fire, not really a, as a true run through, but I just want to talk it, talk it over. Um, it's called end of summer warm up. It's an 84 yard, two inch target. So one, one two inch target, 84 yards, that's it. Uh, this is the timed stage. So you get the bonus points. One tenth of a bonus point per second remaining on 120 second part time, 10 rounds. You're going to start standing rifle and all gear in hand, mag in action open. Upon start signal, shooter will take a supported position on the 55 gallon barrel and engage the target with three shots. Shooter will transition to the 55 gallon, or sorry, shooter will then ascend the rooftop, which will be on the right side once we get that built. And uh, engage the same target with four shots. Shooter will then transition to the 55 gallon barrel again and engage the same target with the final four shots. She will then indicate that they have completed the stage to pause the time. Um, we have timers for that. 55 gallon barrel is on its side, top facing down range. For safety considerations, shooter may be handed the rifle after sending the rooftop. Um, not really going to run through it and no point in timing it, but I guess I'll just, what I want to do is just kind of get a feel for the barrel because that's the lowest position on the ground and it's target placement. I don't have a bag, so this is going to be very unsupported on this barrel. Um, some people have pondered how to shoot these stages. Let me get this microphone in my pocket here. Hopefully the plugs doesn't come out. Um, generally speaking, what I like to do on these barrels, and I'm sure more um, experienced shooters will have different opinions, but basically if you're gonna shoot like this, what you can do is kind of just straddle the barrel with your legs if you can, and you can shoot upwards like this, but granted your bipod is gonna give you uh, kind of an issue here so you can kind of back up you can kind of straddle the rifle if you want to my bipod can get lower uh, depends how you want to run it um, if you want to game it a little bit so I can probably shoot it like this um, you can kind of get on top of it if you want to um, you can kind of control the barrel with your body and that's probably a more traditional way so lots of ways you can do it to be honest I may just shoot it like this And you can kind of control it either way with your body. Uh, and if you want, you can get your knees in there. You can spread your knees around it, kind of stabilize it. Um, I actually need more elevation because the pistol grip's gonna hit it. So that's kind of it. I got a mag in here. I'm gonna mag. Run a couple rounds here. To show how we shoot this stage. We're off the barrel. And you can use kind of the barrel 
to orient the gun too because you can kind of shimmy it left to right kind of angle it so let's find the target here yeah maybe a little more elevation there so yeah anyway i would traditionally have my bag and i would sport this and i can kick the barrel one way or the other actually i'm on the wrong target here we go And I missed it. All right. Hit. 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 Miss. Point five. Am I shooting over the top or underneath? Actually, oh, I'm actually one tenth low. Might be coming underneath. And the wind is a little hokey today, so I need two tenths of a mil right for some reason. So it's pretty easy to shoot off the barrel. Um, this is probably an easier way to do it, uh, depending on your body is, but kind of just, uh, basically I'm sitting on my heels right now, my knees are on the ground, shins level to the ground, and just straddling the barrel between my knees, and so it doesn't want to roll too much. That's pretty stable. Uh, anyway, that's kind of it for the Sage's Fire. Uh, I'm gonna go and start packing it up. Um, went through them pretty quick. Uh, hopefully I'll have the rooftop ready to go. I need to talk to the other range um, match coordinator because he said he could make one. Um, my problem is right now, again, I said uh, my truck is uh, at, the, at the auto body shop getting painted. So I have no way to get the lumber home um, and work on it and then transport it here. So uh, I'll have to co connect with him by email or text and we'll see what's going on there. Again, there's two rooftop uh, barricades up there on the upper um, pad up there. I can't drag it down here though because there's no wheels on it and again I don't have my truck so um, yeah that's kind of it so let me pack up I'm all packed up about to get out of here put all the target bases back in the contents container um, I made three more uh, last week and I put those in there so we have plenty of target bases I have two more 4x4s that are cut to length I just need to cut some 2x4s and I can make two more stands but I don't think I need to do those anytime soon. And I repaired one. I took one home after the match last month and I, I uh, re-glued the, the legs, if you want to call it that, and then the um, put new screws in there to uh, make sure that they don't separate or come apart. Uh, this course of fire, uh, I guess it's pretty straightforward. Uh, the rooftop stage, sorry, I couldn't, I couldn't run through that because I don't have a rooftop yet. Um, still trying to work that out. Um, as far as the, uh, that uncle Jesse stage where that quarter inch target, that quarter inch KYL at 50 yards, that's going to be something you guys need to, to, uh, debate whether or not you're going to shoot that, uh, that KYL at the end in order to get all the points. Um, it might be worthwhile to just, to call it the banker points before that. Who knows? If you know your gun and you're comfortable with it and the conditions go for it. Otherwise, uh, it might be worthwhile to be cautious. Uh, the only thing else I want to mention, the, the uh, prop stage where you have the four barricades. If you saw me, I used the buckets and the tire, and I shot them off from prone. Um, that's one way to go. I don't think anyone's going to shoot the sawhorse, to be honest. And I, I, I don't know if I was clear when I said I, the sawhorse is probably the more comfortable of the barricades to shoot off of. When I say comfortable, it's just all you do is you know just set your rifle down, you're kneeling down, and you shoot, right? To me, that's pretty comfortable um, compared to just in an awkward prone position where you're slightly, like really elevated. Um, that can be uncomfortable to, to many people and to myself. I mean, it's easy to just to set your rifle down on, you know, a chest high or waist high barricade and shoot off of it. It's pretty easy to get down and shoot. It may not be as stable as prone or even an awkward prone position off of like a, a tall barricade that's still low enough, like knee high or something, shin high. 
Um, that can be uncomfortable to shoot off of. Uh, some people can't shoot prone off that. Some people try to do some quasi sitting where they're really hunched over. So I don't know. Even though Sawhorse seems comfortable to shoot off of, I don't think anyone's going to shoot off it because it's the least stable. Um, we'll see. I mean, we'll have it there because that's part of the stage. Um, you have to have the four barricades as defined. The two and a half gallon bucket, or two gallon bucket, five gallon, the tire and the sawhorse. So, but I feel like most people will pick the two buckets and the tire, um, even though the tire is kind of he heavy and you got to roll it over. Um, you got plenty of time to shoot the stage. Uh, anyway, that's that's it for uh, today's range vlog. Uh, just ran through that real quick. Um, hopefully, it was informative for you. And again, NRL 22 at the West End Gun Club. Uh, it will be for Sunday of the month, so that's September 27th, I think. I'll correct that in the captions of this video if I'm wrong. Um, but yeah, tentatively for Sunday, uh, assuming things are the way they are right now with COVID-19, um, stays pretty flat, we'll be having the match and we shouldn't have to cancel. Um, but we will still have the cap, so 15 max shooters, not counting staff. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next vlog.